Science likes limits. Numbers keep chaos polite. We measure earthquakes, storms, even fear. But there are frontiers where numbers fail, where the act of measuring becomes an act of suicide. Radiation lives there. In this video, we're climbing through seven radiation levels so intense that scientists can't even scale them. Where readings melt, equations collapse, and death happens faster than time can count it. Level 1. 10 to the power of 8 sieverts per hour, beyond sensor tolerance. Every discovery begins with a number. Every disaster begins when that number stops working. A standard Geiger counter can detect up to a few hundred millisieverts per hour. Beyond that, its circuits ionize. It dies before you do. That's what happened at Chernobyl, April 1986. When the reactor's graphite core was exposed, engineers sent men with handheld dosimeters. Their devices blinked a comfortable 3.6 Röntgen per hour, high but survivable. They wrote it down, relieved. But 3.6 wasn't the truth. It was the maximum value the meter could display. The real exposure near the open core exceeded 20,000 Röntgen per hour, roughly 50,000 sieverts, enough to kill in under a minute. By the time they realized, those men were already walking ghosts. Their instruments failed first, then their organs followed. Film badges turned black, wristwatches stopped, and even glass darkened as energy tore through atomic lattices. Level 1 isn't the death of a person. It's the death of measurement, the moment when the truth becomes too bright for reality to record. Scientists still call this instrument saturation. But to the ones who carried the meters that night, it meant something simpler. If the counter is quiet, you're already dead. Level 2. 10 to the power of 10 sieverts per hour. Subatomic chaos. Radiation is simply energy in motion until motion becomes destruction. At this intensity, particles tear through atoms with enough force to strip their electrons, then their nuclei. Molecules no longer break. They detonate at the molecular level. Chemistry stops existing. Physics takes over. This exists only for moments during nuclear detonations. At ground zero, the radiation pulse from a fission bomb reaches tens of billions of sieverts per hour. Within the first microsecond, the air itself becomes plasma at tens of millions of degrees Celsius. Every atom of your body is hit by trillions of high-energy gamma photons. Human skin doesn't burn here. It ionizes. Cells vanish before nerve signals can register pain. Even shadows become fossils. At Hiroshima, people left imprints of their bodies on stone walls, the surfaces beneath them shielded from the flash for less than a millisecond. No protective suit can stop this. Lead melts, concrete fluoresces. The only survivors of such exposure are the ones far enough away that time itself cushions the blast, outside the radius where atoms forget how to stay bonded. Level 2 is the instant where biology loses to mathematics, where mass converts to light faster than thought. The limit that divides destruction you can witness from destruction that happens faster than witnessing. Level 3, 10 to the power of 12 sieverts per second, the power of a dying star. We've never built a reactor that could reach this, but the universe has. When a star collapses in a supernova, the implosion compresses matter into neutron density, then rebounds outward in a flood of gamma radiation. For a few seconds, it outshines every other star in its galaxy. The radiation field near the core exceeds a trillion sieverts per second, far beyond anything a particle detector can record. On Earth, the closest we've ever simulated is inside CERN's Large Hadron Collider, where proton beams carry energies of 7 TeV per particle. Even there, the radiation density is a fraction of a fraction of what a supernova breathes every second. When sensors approach these intensities, they don't melt they transmute. Silicon wafers turn into amorphous glass, wires vaporize into plasma, and data dies mid-transmission. At level 3, radiation behaves like matter, and matter behaves like light. Iron becomes transparent, air stops scattering, shadows disappear. If a human were somehow transported one kilometer from a supernova's heart, death wouldn't come in milliseconds. It would come in fractions of atomic vibration long before any sensory system could exist to notice. Scientists can model the equations, but not the experience. Because level 3 isn't just lethal, it's unobservable. Light itself can't carry an image of something brighter than itself. Level 4, 10 to the 15th sieverts, the neutron star field. 
There are places in the cosmos where radiation doesn't travel through space. It defines it. After a supernova collapses, the remnant left behind becomes a neutron star, an object no wider than a city, yet heavier than our sun. Its magnetic field and radiation pressure are beyond comprehension, trillions of times stronger than Earth's, strong enough to drag atoms into pencil-thin beams of gamma light that slice across galaxies. If Earth were placed in even one astronomical unit, the distance from us to the Sun, from an active neutron star, its radiation output would strip our atmosphere in seconds. At one kilometer, everything – air, ocean, rock – would vaporize into plasma in under a microsecond. Neutron star surfaces emit energies around 10 to the 15th sieverts, bathing themselves in X-rays and gamma rays that would kill instantly at any conceivable distance. Even robotic probes couldn't send data from that close. Electronics ionize and metals turn liquid. We've detected their pulses from thousands of light years away. Even here, the signals are so intense they distort our instruments. Radio telescopes must filter them down to a billionth of their strength to avoid frying receivers. Astronomers call these stars pulsars, but the name doesn't capture the violence. Each pulse is a cosmic heartbeat, a lighthouse made of death, spinning hundreds of times per second. Time near these stars bends. The magnetic field can slow atomic clocks. The gravity curves the path of light itself. Radiation here isn't a side effect, it's the shape of reality. If you stood on its surface, assuming your atoms could still define standing, the force of gravity would crush you to the width of a proton before radiation even reached your DNA. But if, by some miracle, you could survive long enough to see it, you wouldn't see a star. You'd see the edge of physics glowing blue, level 5. 10 to the 17th sieverts per hour, the universe's deadliest light. Some radiation kills silently. This kind kills universes. A gamma ray burst (GRB) is the most violent radiation event known. Born when a star 30 times heavier than the sun collapses into itself, it releases more energy in 10 seconds than every other star in its galaxy combined. If one were aimed at Earth from a thousand light years away, it would strip the ozone, boil the upper atmosphere, and sterilize the surface in milliseconds. No blast, no sound, just a pulse of pure radiation, invisible and final. In the first microseconds of the burst, the flux near the source exceeds 10 to the 17th sieverts per hour, an intensity that vaporizes atomic nuclei. Matter doesn't melt, it disintegrates into quark soup. Astronomers call the first fraction of this event the prompt emission. It's so bright that even satellites in low Earth orbit go blind when it passes. Detectors shut down to save themselves. The signal that reaches us, billions of years later, is already diluted a trillion-fold, and it still fries sensors. If a spacecraft somehow hovered within a million kilometers of a GRB source, its hull would turn to gas before its computer could register the event. Death wouldn't take microseconds, it would take zero, because the meaning of time breaks before radiation that fast. Level 5 is radiation weaponized by gravity itself. Light is so powerful it stops being light. A warning fired across eternity that life is the exception, not the rule. Level 6, 10 to the power of 20 sieverts, inside the event horizon. At this level, radiation no longer travels. It falls inward forever. This is the edge of a black hole, where gravity is so intense that even photons cannot escape. The closer matter gets, the faster time stretches. A second near the horizon equals years outside. To an observer, you appear frozen. To yourself, you vanish in an instant. The radiation here isn't emitted. It's trapped. Any energy trying to leave is bent back by curvature so extreme that space folds around itself. Scientists estimate that the energy density near this boundary can reach 10 to the 20 power sieverts or more, though sievert becomes meaningless when atoms can't exist. Approach a black hole with a gamma spectrometer and the readings would spike beyond infinity, not because of higher energy but because energy and space have merged. A process called spaghettification stretches every particle into a one-dimensional filament thinner than thought. Death happens faster than a photon's wavelength, technically microseconds, but in practice, outside of time. Inside, the rules collapse. Electromagnetism gives way to gravity's dominion. 
Temperature becomes undefined. Radiation becomes geometry. Level 6 is not a place where you die. It's where the definition of you becomes irrelevant. A zone so absolute that even decay has no meaning because nothing remains to decay. For physicists, it's the end of measurable reality. For poets, it's the moment the universe stops blinking. Level 7. 10 to the power of 32 sieverts. The first light of existence. If level 6 is the end of meaning, level 7 is its beginning. The Big Bang wasn't an explosion in space. It was an explosion of space. In the first 10 to the minus 43 seconds, the universe existed as a singular fireball of radiation. Temperature approximately 10 to the 32nd Kelvin. Energy density approximately 10 to the 32nd sieverts per second per particle. Nothing solid, nothing stable, just photons colliding so violently that matter could not yet form. Every proton, electron and atom in your body began here. Inside radiation so intense, it forged the laws of physics. At that instant, all forces were one. Gravity, electromagnetism, and nuclear interaction were still indistinguishable. A single scream of creation that lasted less than a heartbeat of time. We can write the equations, the Planck epoch, the Planck temperature, the Planck time, but they exist only as symbols. No sensor, no simulation, no quantum computer can reach it. Because to recreate it would require compressing all energy in the observable universe into a single atom of space. That's not an experiment. That's genesis. Radiation here isn't something emitted. It is existence itself. Every later flash, every reactor, every star is just an echo of this first blinding instant. If death in microseconds has a parent, it's this. Because here, microseconds didn't exist yet. Time had to be invented afterward. Level 7 is the radiation of beginning and ending fused together. A field so absolute that creation and destruction are the same event viewed from opposite sides of time. We began with the limits of science, the comfort of measurement, the safety of numbers. But past level 1, the instruments failed. Past level 3, matter failed. Past level 4, space itself failed. And beyond level 7, even language fails. For scientists, these levels remain unreachable, not because we fear them, but because they erase the observer the moment they begin. So the next time someone says, radiation is measurable, controllable, remember, that's only true while the instruments still exist. Beyond that, there are no numbers, no scales, no seconds left to count, only light too bright to measure, and silence that lasts forever.